Ooh. <laughs> well, that's a first. I haven't seen her do that before. I think she might have been sleeping. Hi, thank you for joining me for another video on Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I'm going to continue with the series that explores my collection, my animals. I will show you my snakes, my lizards, everything. So I will go shelf by shelf in my tarantula room, feeding them and talking about them and cutting this up into different segments that will be published every Tuesday. And if anything uh, comes up in between and I want to film something, it'll just be bonus, uh, some kind of surprise. And these are filmed ahead of time, so it may not be the day, of course, that I filmed it. When it's published, it's going to be a couple of weeks out. This video this time is going to focus mostly on feedings, and I'm still showing you this one shelf and still going through that. So uh, soon I will be moving on to another shelf, but it's gonna be a couple weeks before all of this gets caught up. Anyway, that means I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna film next because I can only go through this. At, well, I guess I could come back and just start feeding and doing it all over again, but do you think that would be boring? Thank you for joining me again. And I look forward to bringing you another video next Tuesday. In this enclosure, I have a little N in say female who is um, about a year old, maybe eight to nine months. I mean, be a year soon enough. This is one of the offspring of my female and male that I bred over a year ago. They were in a communal setup together. And um, obviously I've disassembled that. And um, I did not, didn't feel that I was having good luck with it. The female, I found her dead, um, buried deep in the substrate. Uh, I couldn't tell if there was any cannibalism or not or what maybe killed her. And the babies were 18 to begin with. And I think I ended up pulling maybe 10 out. So there were at least eight that didn't make it for whatever reason. And the, when I decided to pull them out, I had just found a baby that was partially eaten. And I can't prove, you know, what ate it. But I just decided, you know, having them in a communal setup was not, not really working. Um, there could be a variety of reasons for that. Maybe they were too crowded. Um, I mean, they did have quite a bit of space and they were spread out in different locations. But that still might not have been enough. Um and they were fed really well so I can't say but this one right here the little female she's been sexed and I'm probably gonna keep her uh, and you can see her water dish um, has been draining out into the rest of her enclosure so I'm going to rehouse her soon because it's too wet in there and this is not a good enclosure for an N inse if it's always going to be wet. So just wanted to show you that. I have also sold several of the babies um, and I have several of them left. Here's another one um, with a hair in it. This one looks like it's closed itself off, but you can see what excellent webbers they are. People who've never had these before have commented about how exciting they are because of all the webbing that they create um, with all these different openings. <laughs> it's funny, it looks like a, a pig's nose or a skull. This is a piece of cork bark that has a, a little hole in the top and, and this one's made several entrances. I can put a dubia down inside of there and maybe this one's hungry, maybe not. They tend to be pretty good eaters. Sometimes they'll just come out and grab their food, but other times not so much. So, try this. I don't know if we're having any luck today. Nope. 
Try to get this one out. Okay. So, not hungry, but I wanted to show you this enclosure and uh, tell you about the NNSA. This is the enclosure of my piece of Fusca Highland. Her name is Nyx, like the Greek goddess of night. Um, and she has recently molted here. And she's thrown, <laughs> it's in a million pieces and it's down inside of her water bowl. Probably the best thing to do is just take the whole water bowl out. Looks like all the water has drained out. Her substrate is pretty um, damp. I'm going to go ahead and just give her a new water bowl because that's kind of a mess that she's made. She kind of chopped up her molt into a million pieces like she's some kind of butcher. Okay, she has fresh water now and I am going to try to feed her and see if she'll come out for us. She's going to come out of this tube right here to retrieve her food. Um, I'm going to give her a male dubia and I say that because when you have a concentration of too many males in your dubia colony, they may start to um, cannibalize on each other, kind of like this one has the wings are all frayed, the males fight. So I try to feed some of the males so that it cuts down back on how many males I have and they stay healthier, less competition. I'll be surprised if she comes out. She's really shy, but it's worth a try. Okay, that was her grabbing her meal. We didn't get to see her, but I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to see if we can see her from the other direction. Okay, so she is in there. You can see there's a bit of a struggle going on with the dubia. I'm going to try shining a light. All right, yeah, she's got it. Um... Oh, it's really hard to see what position she's in. It's blocking us out. It's too bad you can't see it. So what's happening here is she's actually lying on her back almost, like flipped. The dubia is on top of her and it's kicking a piece of her webbing around as it's trying to get away. Uh, but she's definitely got it and her, her fangs are deep inside of its abdomen she's holding it like that um, but she is definitely in a strange position where she's leaning way way back so actually it's the underside of her her carapace, carapace that we see right there she's holding the dubia on top of her it's almost like those threat poses you see where they're completely backwards. Definitely wanted you to be able to see, so that in a different light and looking down into her burrow, how she's upside down, the roach has kicked uh, substrate all over her, and her feet, you can see the iridescence of her foot pads facing up. So I just imagine that she's releasing venom into this roach. When she turns over, she has yellow striping and she has some gorgeous purple on her legs. She's quite beautiful. This is the top of the enclosure to my uh, Salmopius Pulcher female. You can see that she had it webbed up pretty good. 
um, when I pulled it off, you know, you could hear all the webbing and, you know, you could see it just kind of flying. I don't know if you can hear that. Very crackly, kind of like a, a black widow web. So she has a pothos plant in here. Um, and she has her cork bark. She's incorporated a lot of leaves into her web. She's got tunnels. She's got a really nice tunnel coming up the side here, up to the top. She's got another one here. Um, she's got a main, another entrance, and she's got another entrance there. That's quite extravagant. It looks like there's a bolus down there. Now she is beautiful with attitude. Pull this bolus out, dispose of it. So this is the back of the pea poulter enclosure. Um, I'm going to try to feed her so we can see her coming up through her, her web. Um, and her name is Nephthys. Nephthys, which is the Egyptian um, goddess of death, lamentation, nighttime, and rivers. It's interesting because it's like she's created this network of rivers, um, if you want to call it that, in her enclosure. So, see how she responds to being offered a male dubia. Let's see, should we go from that side? Maybe that side would be good. She was out earlier. When I moved her enclosure, she took off. Kind of ruining her web here. Try from this side. She just might not show us anything today. unusual because the last couple times she was really interested in her food so I dropped it in um, she'll either eat him or she'll have to go hide somewhere for a while until she's hungry here is another and in say olive enclosure and this one needs water so the substrate below the water bowl is wet but I think uh, Sometimes the water gets on the webbing and then it sucks it out and it gets into the substrate. I'm still going to put a little bit in here. You just have to be careful with these that their enclosures don't get too wet because of that. Because the moss or webbing sucks the water out of the bowl and puts it into the substrate and then it gets really damp like that enclosure I showed you earlier. I'm gonna give this one a small dubia. Just gonna put it right here so it goes down into the enclosure. I don't know, this one doesn't really look like it. it's gonna crawl anywhere, does it? All right, well, there's a dubia in there and I'll we'll move on to the next one. And here we have a little um, sea species Guanajuato. This is a, um, the Guan Guanajuato is a uh, tarantula from the Guanajuato region in central Mexico. I do have a video about these, um, about their care and about where they're from, what kind of habitat they live in. They are a pretty slow grower, so um, also kind of rare. You don't see them around much. I think I got lucky finding this one. I'm going to offer it a dubia. Probably can't really see that. Definitely not one I see a lot. This is my see Marshali. Um, 
she's been hanging out outside of her burrow quite a bit for several months now. I'm not quite sure why, but it's really nice to see her. Her name is Uni, and she's getting quite the horn on her head, on her carapace. Um, I can test her and see if she's hungry. Ooh. <laughs> well, that's a first. I haven't seen her do that before. I think she might have been sleeping. I very rudely woke her up. Oh, I didn't even move. She's um doing all that on her own. So that's the first time I've seen that kind of a threat pose out of her. Take it she might, she just might not be hungry right now, <laughs> you think? One little bugger I pretty much always expect an attitude from, um, and this is my Ternopelma Sazimai. Um, this little one here is a uh, suspect male, um, and let's see, I forgot, what is the name? Oh yes, this one is named Troll. Um, this one does like to troll me. Here we are trying out, you know, dinner time and we'll see if he's interested, but what I'm probably going to get is a threat pose. Now, this species does tend to be a bit skittish when they're younger and then they, they turn into a little wild ones as they get older. No. Oh. Hmm. Maybe not today, but let's see. Are the fangs in there? Nope. Oh, yep. There you go. It's taking it. So today, Troll has surprised me by not threat posing and very graciously taking his meal. And he let me give him water. Very nice. So this boy right here was sold to me as, labeled as, Acanthoscuria brocklehursti. I ordered Acanthoscuria geniculata. Um, I was told that it was just a mistake, um, but clearly when he matured, he does not look like either one from what I've heard from experts. They tell me that he is probably Acanthoscuria therophosoides, and that's what I call him. And he's not going to be bred, the poor guy, because, you know, I don't know what he is. And I do not believe in hybridizing, creating um, cross species of tarantulas and not knowing what they are. So... He's going to live his life here until he passes away and he eats kind of sporadically. He's probably not going to be hungry today. Surprise me. No, we're not going to eat today, so the males usually... I mean, some of them, with encouragement, they'll eat, but he's uh, he has recently eaten, so I'm not too worried about him. So let's move on to the next one. This little one in here is my tea species, Ratoncita, and this one molted not too long ago and should be hungry by now. This is quite a slow-growing species. Um, and kind of rare. I don't really see them around much. So we can get a little bit more light on them. Nope, doesn't like that. Okay, so um, I'm going to feed this one a very small roach, Dubia, and see if he's hungry. I don't want to scare him with something that's too big. All right. 
That's a hungry one there. Very hungry. Pretty cute too. Ratoncita means little mouse. One of my subscribers um, told me about that. I did look it up, but uh, I've also had people help me. Maybe the only surviving red runner that I have on my property. Fingers crossed, right? What we have here is my female C. elegans enclosure. The substrate is pretty uh, damp because, you know, she set this up. She's probably going to molt. She had a very nice um, sack here a few months ago, and all of those babies went wholesale. So you never know. You might actually own one of her babies and not know it. Um, I don't know where they went um, for retail, but... That sack did go out, and I saw that there were several places offering C. elegans. I'm sure they come from different people, but maybe you have one of mine. I don't know. So we're just going to give her some water and let her be. So this is a, a little male, um, and he is an eye mirror. Um, and he looks like, you know, he's not, he's not looking too good. I know he's old. Um, and he's been paired with a female here. Hopefully she's gravid. I'm still waiting on her to drop a sack. But right now, he looks like he has... This is a first. I've never really seen a tarantula with poop on their abdomen. But he has some poop on his abdomen. Which kind of concerns me a bit because his abdomen looks kind of wrinkly and, and there's some excrement around his spinnerets. Um, so hopefully he's not impacted. Uh, I do give him water outside of his water bowl because I find that a lot of male tarantulas, mature males, they won't drink out of their water bowl for some reason. Or maybe they just get too weak to climb into it. Um... So I do give them water in other ways by pouring it into their enclosure. Um, hopefully he'll drink. I might have to get a Q-tip, a warm Q-tip, and try to loosen up. It looks like he has some ex excrement on his bum, so that might be something I'm going to do tonight. And how I will do that is by putting him into a smaller vial with a hole and that way I can kind of contain him um, while I use a Q-tip to try and soften that. I'm definitely not going to hold him and try that. But I know this guy's uh, days are numbered. He hasn't been looking too good for a while and that's just uh, an unfortunate part of of keeping tarantulas when you do have the males they don't last as long as the females and it's tragic but it is also part of life he's moving away from that water um, I wonder if he's gonna drink is he gonna drink yes he is so he has a, a water bowl that was half full but yet he didn't drink out of it. So this is just proof of what I was telling you that a lot of times the males just don't seek out the water bowl. And I just don't know why that is, but I've had it happen many times. So drinking from the substrate or drinking from a leaf uh, is important. And so it's also good not to just leave them unattended, you know, and think, oh, he's got a water bowl, he'll be fine because you know, that's not always what happens. If they won't drink from it, then they will get dehydrated and die. So this little guy, I forgot to tell you, his name is Argos. Hopefully he'll be a father, but I don't know. I've had the female for quite a while. After they paired, it looked like a successful pairing. Um, she's been coming out of her burrow a lot. So I've been hoping that she's going to maybe weave 
a sack, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> yes, I jumped, even though I knew what to expect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're not going to disappoint anybody, are we?